What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Wow, today. <laughs> it's been a wild week, lots of ham radio news, but today we're going to have some fun with Android tablets. I'll explain more when we flip things over and kick things off fully, but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's been a while since I mucked around with an Android tablet, and i got to say I'm impressed. And it turns out a lot of the things I already own as an amateur radio operator work really well with the tablet. So we're going to talk all about that. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Please enjoy the memes as I kick it off. Good afternoon, Colo Radio. Oh, it's Colorado, I think. Colo Radio. Yeah, there you go. James Jenner, Andy Callie. What's up? I saw Kate MRD. What's up, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Hello, everyone, indeed. <laughs> Good afternoon. I guess it's that counts. All right. Let's kick things off while everybody's waiting. Thanks so much for coming on in. All right. How's it going, everybody? I am Josh, amateur radio call sign KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. You know what we try to do out here is bring new and interesting ham radio topics to the YouTubes so that you can see them, possibly get more interest in them, or just, you know, know that it's out there and it gives you a little bit more information that you can kind of put in your brain on how to do different things in amateur radio. So, again, thanks for clicking on the uh, the stream here. Really do appreciate it. Hello from uh, Ham Radio for Non-Techies. What's going on? Gordon's Farmer Forge in there. Hate all the hamsters. What's up? <laughs> uh, and there's Zach, admin extraordinaire. Hey, Zach, how you doing? Okay, so today's topic is going to be on Android tablets for radio. And I said that appropriately, for radio. We're definitely going to cover some ham radio things, but the tablet works with a lot of really interesting devices that I think just is going to become part of my kit. For a long time, I pack I almost have like two laptops I take sometimes. If I go out, you know, and I'm doing a portable live stream, I'll have my Mac, which is kind of like my streaming unit and my video editing. And then I need like a Windows device or a Raspberry Pi. We'll, we'll talk about that too a little bit towards the end on maybe in some cases we can get away from having to have um, a, a Raspberry Pi in all situations, which for me is going to be Awesome. I'm, I'm very excited about that. So let's talk about some news because we've got a lot of stuff going on. Boy, howdy, is there a lot of stuff going on. I uh, want to remind everybody that as we get closer to Huntsville, Hunts, Huntsville, uh, if you catch the podcast, you'll know that's quite the topic of discussion. Um, that the, the shirts, if you want to get any of the Ham Radio Crash Course shirts to wear at the Huntsville Ham Fest, like the Ham Radio Crash Course Huntsville shirt, that is uh, styled after the Werner Braun Braun Center. Uh, make sure you get your order in soon because they're not going to show up uh, otherwise. We also have a 1X crew of our standard logo. It says 1X crew on the back for all of you podcast aficionados. And uh, <laughs> part one of our I'm with the bands shirt. This is the 1X crew HRCC uh, flaming or sorry, flying 705, which is pretty sweet. Leia makes all these after your ideas come into the podcast, so thanks so much. A prime example of that, Bunny sent in a uh, shirt that got made into a shirt, a merch, so we're sending her one for free. So thank you, Bunny, for doing that. By the way, if you do listen to the podcast or you haven't tried it yet, it's the Ham Radio Crash Course, wherever you podcast. And if you send us an email, Leia at hamtactical.com, with your Ham Radio questions, comments, or a merch idea, if we end up making a merch out of it, We'll send you the first one as a thank you for, for coming up with such a good idea and sending it to us. So thanks for that. Okay. Huge, huge month coming up. Next week, next Wednesday, is the Ham Nation 500th episode. It is next week, guys. 500 episodes of Ham Nation. As part of that, ICOM has been generous to give us a ICOM 705 to give away for free an AH705 tuner to go along with it, and then that all gets put into an LC192 ICOM backpack. That's the grand prize. There is one prize. That is it. If you're not in the giveaway, the link is in the description, and you can get started. Uh, it's just a you know your name and an email and, and where the address is to send it to you. That's what we need to get you in the list. It's going to be a big show. There's already <laughs> so many people on it. I really am going to have to get my... Uh, I got to get working on that actually tomorrow, so I'm, I'm 
pretty excited, but ooh, buddy, <laughs> it's a little frightening. Uh, also, there is a big giveaway that uh, Bridgecom is doing that a couple of the amateur radio YouTubers are involved in. You can see there's Dave Kassler and Eric, Ham Radio Concepts, myself, Ham Radio 2.0, and then Mick Lore, who's um, the website you're probably familiar with if you work on Baofengs. So we'll be... Um, you know, it's, it's just a cool thing that they're putting together. So over $4,000 in amateur radio equipment, pretty cool. The link is in the description for that too. And you can, it's the same kind of thing. You just join with providing some information there. And, uh, oh, cool. Which of the channels were you following before? Yeah, make sure you click that one for Hammer Radio Crash Course. Okay. Uh, okay, later in this month, more giveaways. This is going to be nonstop giveaways uh, this month. Radioddity and I are going to be doing a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a DB20 GMRS mobile, that guy right there. We are going to be doing a GMRS, a GM30 giveaway for that radio right there. And then we're going to do three e gift cards to Radioddity at a $20 value each. And so, yeah, this is all in promotion of their anniversary date which is august 18th so that's about the time the giveaway will be so oh my gosh there's so many things going on um big <laughs> lots of giveaways so hopefully you guys are ready for that okay so what is going on in the news well in the news we got some really interesting information about cb and frs and gmrs cobra cb radio manufacturer put forward a petition to ask the fcc to allow for fm modulation on the cb space and it sounds like it's going to go through so they're going to get access to fm is that you know groundbreaking stuff eh, not too much uh it you may get a much better audio quality in some cases with fm over am and single sideband to a point so i think it's pretty cool i think that's good news second item this one right there motorola's petition to request periodic transmissions of location and data on GMRS and FRS. So think of this as like GMRS potentially is getting its own version of APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. That's going to give them the ability, if you're out, you know, if you're an off-roader, you could have the ability to beacon out where you're located at any one time. If you're, you know, outside of phone range or something like that, it's just a nice little extra layer of capability that can be added to FRS and GMRS radios for a safety, you know, feature or just the ability to, to send data, almost like texting over FRS and GMRS. Now, I don't know exactly what this is all going to look like when it's fully implemented and there are radios out in the wild that actually do this, but I think it's definitely a step in the right direction and I support them doing Doing that so cheers uh to cobra and i think also president got involved in supporting the petition weren't necessarily written a name in the petition uh, and then of course motorola for bringing that up so yeah uh wrong link under four how to enter oh okay so if the links are um off i i will sort that out thanks for the mentioning of that i will sort them out that was from dan m zero IWD or IDW. I'll sort that out. Sorry about that. But yes, um, hopefully the 705 one, you got the Ham Nation one, right? Because you got plenty of time with the Bridgecom stuff. Uh, the one that you we don't want to miss, though, is the Ham Nation link. You need to get on that right now because that's going to be on Wednesday. So if you're if you're interested in getting involved in a giveaway, definitely, definitely do that. Okay. Hopefully I'll wait for a second and see. Just say no to ham toys, says Anthony Becerra. You can't be serious. Say no to ham toys? Let's see. Yeah, FM on 11 meters would be nice. I, I think so. But, I mean, why not? There's there's no, no problem not to, right? Yeah, there you go. Liberty Cave says GMRS tracking, non-automated. Yeah, correct. This is for automated. There are manual beaconing modes with FRS and GMRS. This specifically is periodic. It'll do it automatically. Ah, the Ham Nation one under the TNCs. It's a link. Okay, I'll update that. So after this goes live, there, there will be a link in the description to get the, the giveaway correctly for Ham Nation. Sorry about that. I will uh, just go ahead and drop the... I think I can just drop this in the chat for all you that don't that don't have it yet. Let's do that. Boom, there you go. You should be able to pull that up. And yep, there you go. That should be good. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for the correction, everybody watching live. Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, 
We're talking about Android tablets. I'll say first and foremost, I, I've used mainly like two Android phones in my life. The first one, the Google G1, which I actually really liked. I thought it was a really cool phone. And then I had a Samsung phone that's non-remarkable. Never really got into Android tablets. I've kind of been an Apple guy for a really long time. And for, for me, a tablet has always just kind of been a, a convenience item, a, a content consuming item, watching videos and all that stuff. But after talking to uh, some of the admins on the HRCC on our Discord, by the way, Discord after chat, link is in the description. Please join us over there. We'll continue the discussion live, voice back and forth. You can ask any questions you want while we're doing the Discord after chat. But I, I was gifted a tablet from my dad, really old Android tablet, and it was, it's, it's old. Still worked, though. And sure enough, I got uh, APRS Droid running on the tablet really quickly and using this radio right there, right, the HGUV98 that I did a video on this week. I was able to get onto APRS really easily. And then I started thinking to myself, well, well why stop there? And then I started learning about um, USB on the go, which is the ability to connect USB devices that would be standard for like a computer into your uh, your Android tablets, and it they work. A lot of them work really well. Others, there are devices and apps that are specifically designed that they can just work on an Android tablet and will not work with an iPhone or an iPad at all. And so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, very simply, this is a Lenovo Smart Tab M8. It's about a hundred dollars. By the way, the link's in the description to my Amazon store, which uh, most everything is there except for some of the things that are going to be more specific. So there's the there's the Lenovo tab. It's like 100 bucks, And then, you know, of course, we're going to talk about the Nano VNA. A lot of heavy demonstration today, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope this is going to be informidable. Informidable. Great. <laughs> Informative. Uh, so, yeah, Lenovo Smart Tab, simple Android tablet, right? I'm not, and even the, the one that was actually recommended is the On, uh, O N N tab that Walmart sells. That thing's like 75 bucks. A lot of this will work just fine on that tablet. And there, there was some mention above, you know, in the chat that people like the Samsung tablets. Nothing really wrong with them, but they do have kind of some bloatware I've heard on them. So I, I kind of wanted to steer clear of b bloatware. I don't really want a tablet for content listening and, and watching YouTube, I'll use the iPad for that. I want something that can be just like devoted to live with my, my radio gear. And so that's what we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to slide on over here and I'm going to pull up the chat room so I'll be able to see it correctly. Uh, so somebody asked, what is the, oh, it's Chris, W-A-W-T-S. Uh, I guess I'm getting a little fancy. It's kind of hot today. So I, I, I got a back patio, um, patio white this is just a white wine from the Santa Ynez Valley region. This is a 2017, so it's pretty good, actually. Not a little oaky, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little wine snobby today. It's, it's actually really good and, and very refreshing because it's cool. Uh, another point for the Lenovo, I don't have it out with me, but it comes with a nice little docking station, so you can actually use it as kind of like a desk clock a Google Assistant if you want to do that. But I was already chatting earlier uh, with uh, Lifen, Lifo. I, sorry, I'm screwing your name up. But we were talking about uh, privacy uh, with some of these tablets. And yeah, that could be a concern. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not recommending you get on the cloud with any of this stuff. I, I, I do support rooting Android, but I want to put this into perspective. I'm not uh, an Android super user at all. So everything I'm going to show you is very, very easy to do, very easy to use very simple and again i'm not a power user so if i can do this you can definitely do this and that's what we're going to be talking about today okay let me hop over here get to some fun demonstration okay so the first thing and i, I didn't really demonstrate it too much on the video we did but we're gonna we're gonna play around with aprs for a little bit also uh, i'll give you a, a heads up if you have winlink and you have the ability to winlink why don't you throw a WinLink email at ki6naz at WinLink, and uh, I'll read your email on the air, most likely, here shortly. So anyway, all right, so we're going to start with just the standard APRS. I do have an external antenna here. I did cover this on the video that I did, but why not just show it again on a much better tablet, because I was using uh, that old tablet from my dad. Okay, come on. All right, so uh, this is just the, the standard, you know, Android. I made myself a little folder down here for the apps that I'm going to be running. APRS Droid is going to be the first one we're going to take a look at. 
So ideally, if we have our little unit here connected, which we should, let's see, maybe we see some activity here, hopefully. Oh, wait, it's on the wrong one. Oh, this got flashed recently. I, I just, I actually flashed this one. I bricked my own radio. You got to love that. Hold on. I've got to <laughs> love it. Got to love that. That's funny. There we go. Question for the group. I have a Samsung Galaxy Note. I have a Samsung Galaxy Note uh, 10 da, 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 2014 edition. Yes, it is old and the battery is no longer holds a charge. Is it worth replacing the battery just getting a new Android tablet? Guy, I mean, this thing is like $100, $100 for this guy. Rooting Android is like a Linux crash course. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Uh, no, I, I was ending. I was going to do something different with this radio, so I ended up just resetting it just to get myself straight. And sure enough, I, I remembered I wasn't going to do that, so I screwed myself up a little bit. All right, let's see. We're going to go choose your TNC. We should be using that guy correctly. You can see we obviously have a ton of... There's your problem. So we are getting a bunch of signals here. You can see them right there. That's one of the calls. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we're we're copying. By the way, you can send me a message, KI6NAZ-7, if you want to try that right now. So yeah, all I've done here is just activated Bluetooth, right? So this is literally the simplest thing we're going to be doing. This is like step one, and I'm really just showing you that like, oh, hey, look, I've got APRS working. Great, that's fun. That's super cool. And if we throw it on the map. And again, this is APRS Droid. I'm around this area, and I'm picking up these stations. So far, this shouldn't be surprising to anybody, right? Well, let's reach into my bag of tricks here before we, we tap into this guy, which we're going to be holding off on a little bit. So you get the idea. Like, it's working. APRS Droid works fantastically. Uh, this radio I just did a review of, it is $160. And the app for APRS Droid, I think, is like five bucks. Okay. So hopefully you get the idea. I'll, I'll leave this over here for a second. And I'll show you my little bag. So here's my first stop is going to be Ham Radio Tools, I think. So let's go ahead and pull out my friend here. This guy. That guy, and this guy. Okay. All right, so the first stop we're going to do is on the Nano VNA. The Nano VNA works with this tablet. And again, I, I talked about USB on the go. I'm using a USB on the go adapter here to run it. And it just plugs in pretty simply. So I can just let the Android pound away there. Oops. It likes it better in the right direction there. There you go. Okay, so you've got a couple of things that auto pop on. This is not what we want. They, they try to run. We're going to run those apps later, but not yet. So we're going to get on to um, the, the Nano VNA really quickly. Let's go back back in my ham radio apps actually it's a tools app where is it nano vna all 
Okay. So now we have a, a literal view of Nano VNA right here. It is pulling from the Nano VNA, and you're using it as a visual display instead of having to use uh, the screen, which is on this guy, which can be a little troublesome. So just for the sake of doing it, let's go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and grab an HF antenna and throw it on here and let's see what it looks like. Let's go. Where's my little stylus? There it is. And uh, we're pulling a Smith chart now on my antenna at 14 megahertz. So 14 megahertz through 15 megahertz, which, hey, guess what, guys? My, uh, my step IR has a pretty decent Smith chart showing around 50, um, 50 ohms impedance, which is where we want it to be. I can turn this down for a little bit. And where is we're going to add an SWR? Maybe. So I believe this is my SWR line. Let's see if we, I did that right. Let's do... Oh, no, it is that. There we go. Okay, so now we're looking at my SWR on uh, my, my Step IR. Yeah, you don't need to use a stylus, but it's going to get too fingerprinty if I don't if I don't use this. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, Nick Gaspard. I don't know. Ham Radio 2.0 might be in the, the live stream. He can probably answer that question about whether this will work with our finder radios. Not, not positive. Okay, so it's freaking out here. But, hey, guess what? It works. <laughs> so, uh, connected via USB-C into the um, USB-on-the-go port, right? And you can make this whole thing work. So there you go. Nano VNA. So what have we got so far? We've got APRS and we've got Nano VNA. What if we want to do a little bit more hands-on? Maybe you're working with some circuits or something like that. All right. So let's, let's get rid of this app. I want to get this cleared out. And we'll leave APRS droid going for right now. So I'm going to leave my Nano, Nano VNA to the side for a second. So we're just talking tools still. Next tool. Somebody already saw the name there. The Pokit multimeter and oscilloscope. Not the greatest oscilloscope, but it is oscilloscope all the same. So we turn it on by separating the digital rancher. I have hammers on all my phones and iPads, so I, I didn't load it on here yet. <laughs> but I, I will likely be doing it. Um, so the, the Pokit meters comes with these cool little test probes, these test hook probes, which you might be familiar with if you if you work on oscilloscopes. But basically, if we just go back here, got some tools. I got my Pokit meter. It sees it. And then we've got an, a ton of options that we can use. So if I want to do capacitance, uh, or sorry, continuity, which is what I use this for a lot. You get a nice audible tone. And it's uh, Bluetooth. 
So yeah, that's pretty sweet. I didn't think I would spend a lot of time explaining. This is a multimeter. Um, <laughs> this is just a multimeter that connects via Bluetooth to the uh, software that PoKit uh, runs. It, this thing is not cheap. I think it's uh, close to $100. In fact, where is it? Hold on, I'll show you exactly. Yeah, so it's uh, about $100 for this guy. Not the cheapest thing, but not bad. And it's uh it's it's pretty handy. So you you get you also do, you know, obviously all the things you would expect with a, you know, a multimeter, but you do get let's see, where's the scope? There you go. So you do have an oscilloscope as well. So right now I don't have any I'm not pulling any I'm not pulling a probe on anything, but you would get you would get a one shot. It doesn't have a continuous run. That's pretty nice. And you got a data logger as well. So again, there's nothing there. It may visualize something. I don't know. Doesn't matter anyway. So yeah, you can do that with your little little tablet. And then when you're done, you hold this button and, and click it. And then the legs go back together. And that's how it turns itself off. Anyway, poke it's cool. This goes in my. Uh, I often bring this with me wherever I go. Uh, because it'll it'll work with any phone, let alone Android. This also works with an iPhone. So there's that. Okay. Before we get into the the other stuff, ham radio related, let's go back into my my bag here. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna have some fun. Hey, get out of here. All right, so going back to my, my on-the-go cable, take your standard SDR. So in this case, I'm, I've got a uh, new Alec. This is the NESDR Smart E Extra Range. It's basically like an RTL SDR. You don't have to get that excited. No, it's not that big a deal. And where is my cable? Where is my coax? Oh, of course, it's, it's on this radio here. So we're going to be done with APRS for a little while. Okay, that's it. Let's plug it in. All right, so I am on an external VHF, UHF antenna, but we can make this run as well. Whoa, and it just auto runs. Look at that. Let's go to see if we got some activity we can find on two meters. Oh, something's there. I'm only using one adapter, just this on the go. There's a fine adjustment I'm trying to... I can't see where the fine adjustment line is, so I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I know what this is. Somebody's having fun with the radio right now. 
Uh, so this program, let me go back a step so I can tell you what it is. This program is SDR Touch. And it, assuming you have an on-the-go adapter, Anyway, let's get out of here. I do have a lot of noise going on today. Um, all right, let's jump over here for a second. You can adjust the filter size by pinching and holding and, and dragging. It's going to be as good as your your actual um, antenna situation. So, of course. All right, let's switch antennas. Now, th this isn't really a test of the uh, SDRs because SDRs are pretty horrible on HF. Uh, and you do actually have to go in here. Let me turn this down for a second. You do actually have to go in here and, and set this to, uh, where is it? I'll show you right now. You have to go to direct sampling. We want to go, uh, we'll try both, but I'll start there. Okay, so direct sampling, let's go down to jump. Whoa, hey, stop it. Yeah, Lewis Ray and everybody else that's curious, this will work with an SDR play, sorry, not an RTL SDR or any of the new Alex. It, it will do all of that, no problem. Um, don't know what's going on. By the way, these uh, SDR dongles, this isn't the fault of the tablet. This is the fault of these SDR dongles. These are much better in the higher frequencies. They do pretty poor um, on the HF space. Yeah, so I mean, we're just getting some garbage. Uh, let's let's go down to yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, see, I don't even get FT8 through here right now. Did I have it switched over? I do. Oh well. You'd have to play around with it a little bit. 
So yeah, you got a radio. <laughs> You've got a receiver. I generally don't recommend doing direct sampling in this though. They do not work well. They really don't have the the capability to handle it, but um, it will work just fine as a higher frequency SDR. So if we go 146.520, if Joe is listening, you want to throw your call out there, Joe, go for it. Oh, I got to change. Don't do it yet. Oh man, that wasn't even connected. That's how much noise I'm getting from something. I didn't even have anything connected and it was freaking out. So 146.520. So I got the filter way too big. So we just filtered them out. That's so if I want to go over to that. Pretty good. Not bad audio. Let you listen a little bit. All right, super chat from Christiana. I, I think the the short answer is yes, although this is beyond me in my experience. I, I think you do have to uh, do some work on the Android tablet to make it work, though, but it should. You're going to have to look into that, though. Anyway, you get the idea. So let's close out of that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop that for a second. What else do I have in my little bag of tricks? Ah, yes, the wonderful Moby linked. Okay, so I said email me uh, Winlink if you if you want to. That's because we're going to be using Winlink with the uh, the tablet here. And by the way, just a reminder, we'll be continuing this discussion among many other discussions on the Hammer Radio Crash Course after chat. All right, so connect them like that. Okay, audio out to the mic in and speaker out of the radio. Click the little button. There we go. Turn on my radio. Okay. All right. Okay, so next, let's uh, let's just get rid of all this stuff. There we go. I'm gonna bring up Woad. W O A D. This is a uh, WinLink client for Android, and how it works. There's a couple of different ways you can use this, but you generally have to create sessions, and the sessions are like. Um, packet sessions or using the audio in and out of the radio into something like a TNC or some kind of audio interface, right? So we could use a standard audio interface. But since the MobiLink works as a pretty simple K uh, KISS TNC, I have a couple of sessions set up here. This one is on 145.090. Man, we got a lot of noise coming off of something. Holy smokes. You can see that. Look at an S9 noise floor. What's going on? Is it all the way plugged in? Yikes. This might not work, guys. Maybe we do have the touch lamp on. Leah, if you're watching this, go turn off the touch lamp. 
Uh, I'll show you what that looks like because some of you may want to set this up. Hey, Racer X, thank you for the super chat. Oh, thank you for the seven dollars and sixty-two cents. One of my favorite numbers, seven six two. Okay, so packet outgoing is what we're going to use. Uh, I'm connecting to KM6 RTE. He's actually in um, Santa Ana, so pretty decent little jog from where I'm at. And so I'm going to go in here. Where is it? I'm going to go to edit actually. So what I do is I named it. He is uh, KN610, so that's what I've named it. I'm using packet protocol, so you could do RDOP. There is Telnet. There's a couple different options. You can do Telnet WinLink. And the type is outgoing, because I'm actively going to be um, trying to connect. Now, the settings for this is, is what you'd consider TNC type settings. Oh, that screen's really small. Here, let me zoom in. Sorry about that. There you go. So we are destination address is KM6RTE with a value of 10. You can use a digipeter, but I'm not doing that. I'm going direct. We're going basically simplex. Now for this, um, it is 1200 baud is the Mobi linked. So we're leaving it at 1200. And pretty much this is all default at this point for standard TNC stuff. And the type is KISS. We're going to use KISS instead of audio. And my connection is going to be over Bluetooth. Bluetooth. You could do USB. You could do TS, uh, TCP. You could do that. And the device that we're using is my TNC3. OK. So now if we go back, and let me give you a little bit of a little view here so you can slide over a bit. Boy, I hope this works. We're going to be looking for this red light here, and hopefully a green light corresponding with a red light that tells us we're getting some kind of activity. Ooh, the lights overhead are rough. Anyway, let's let's try it. Yep. Can you see that? See the red light? Yeah, we're transmitting. So this is five watts from my house to Santa Ana, which is, I don't know, 15 miles or so. Doing packet WinLink on my tablet. And we're receiving messages. So you can see that right there, right? You can see that? Look at that. Okay, so it's complete. All right, let me zoom back in. You don't need to see the radio anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my mail, my inbox. And hey, it looks like I've got two emails, one from KN4ZXK. Here is your requested email. Do you check into any WinLink next? I don't uh, because time-wise, it's hard for me to get um, in there, but um, I want to. But I do use WinLink, though, often. In fact, I have uh, some ongoing email correspondence that I've been talking to people for months now, uh, only on WinLink. VE7PJG, Josh, thanks for the outstanding content, as it has made me my re-entry back into Ham Radio so much easier. Between you and Ham Radio 2.0, look at that guy, live is so much more enjoyable. Only thing missing is K6UDA. Boy, I, I agree with you. Thank you, Patrick, from VE7PJG. So yeah, we've got a uh, full featured, basically, well, not, maybe not completely full featured, but uh, pretty close because you're thinking to yourself, hey, I want to reply. Uh, let's, let's go to here, the first one. I say, oh, that was really nice. Let's, let's reply. So I can go in here and just be like, you know, thank you, you know, et cetera. Or, or Bluetooth keyboard. There we go. Okay, it didn't light. There we go. Check into the nets. Get out of here. Uh, no, 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 no. No. So now we can say, thank you for the email. It's not the greatest keyboard. 73. 
Nope, that's 7 2. Well, we are doing QRP, so I guess that counts. And this is actually a trackpad, and this does accept a trackpad entry. <laughs> this tablet has a has a mouse cursor. It's cr it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man, that's so crazy. Good question. Or Jason, oh, so, so forget your life. I missed the question. Jason. Nice. So it can work asynchronously. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that. Give me the give me the use case. I need better understand that. Um, how does WinLink store data until you retrieve the email? It sits on their web servers, I believe. Their email servers. That's how WinLink works. So WinLink works in many different ways, and this will actually do peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer is where you're literally, there's two stations and they're just talking to each other. Versus what I was doing was connecting to an email node that was uh, connecting to the internet and brokering email that way. You don't have to do it that way, though. So we can go post to Outbox. Um, I'll go ahead and reply to this one really quickly, too, so you can see what it looks like to send. Since we received, now we're going to send. And sorry, I'm making these emails brief, but you get the idea. Thank you. Well, thank you. See, I told you this is not the greatest keyboard, but you get used to it. Thank. See, I'm still doing it. You know, you, when you when you type live, you really mess things up. And 550 people watching, um, you're definitely going to mess things up. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you for the quick G's. <laughs> for the quick email. 73. One of these is a three. There it is. Got it. Josh. All right. Post to Outbox. Go. Okay. So now we've got um, all that's working now. So we can go, okay, back to sessions, right? Bring up our sessions again. And we're still going to use this KM6RT since it works. We're going to go ahead and start it. And we should see red light. Red light. Green light. Green light. Red light. Maybe red light. Maybe red light. Come on, buddy. Red light, green light. Red light, okay, good. We've got a connection. <laughs> Sending messages, it says. Uh, this keyboard is, okay, let, let me just, look at the T, the, the T is like super cramped and the space bar is, is split. I mean, this is not for heavy typing use. Not, not, a good, not a good device for that. So yeah, there we go, look, sending messages, boom. Hmm. Am I? Do I have messages already? Not fast. Let's see. This is active, active ham radio. It's happening live. <laughs> Green light still receiving. Usually, there's like a keep alive. So it's sending over radio, but you still need the internet to read them? No, not at all. So Fort Rod, I am uh, transmitting to a radio station. That radio station is sending me email right now, and it goes from them RF to me. Now, yes, they are connected to the internet, but they don't have to be. If you or I wanted to get on here and just send email back and forth to each other directly, we can do that. If, for instance, the uh, station that sent me was, uh, was a VK station. Well, we don't have, a, a obviously, a VHF connection to, to send email um, to Canada from Southern California. We could do peer-to-peer -peer WinLink over HF, and I definitely do that. In this case, though, I'm just using the WinLink system to, uh, to grab the emails. Oh, my gosh, we're receiving a lot of messages right now. <laughs> we're at 10%. Oh, my goodness. I don't like the virtual keyboard. Only 50 likes and 500 people watching, guys? If you enjoy this, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And if this is your first time, click subscribe. Thank you for that. I may have to, uh, I may have to slide back into the video frame and take some questions while we, while we let this load, because, oh boy. It looks like we might have a lot of emails that uh, came in well, that filtered through the system. All right, so let me take some questions. We're at the last 10 minutes, pretty much. Um, 
yeah, I would love your uh, questions on this. So yeah, these are all like super modular. Some of them are Bluetooth. Some of them requires the the USB connection. The MobiLink is Bluetooth, meaning you could hypothetically have something connected over USB and be using Bluetooth. This is everything I showed you today is VHF. I, I didn't tap into HF at all, but I have a feeling that I could probably make this work over HF. I I think uh, I think I can get it to work. Geek with a side of nerd. Don't have HF radio yet. Oh, buddy, you got to get into some HF. Where are we at? 25%. Okay. Well, while I've got you here, while we're waiting for some emails to come in, and we sent the ones out, so thanks everybody who, who sent the emails in. Let's go back to the web really quick. So, yeah, we looked at the Poe kit. Uh, this is about $100. Now, this is kind of overkill, right? $100 for a multimeter. You can buy a really nice multimeter for $100. This thing's tiny, though. I mean, you, you saw it. It's incredibly small. Um, so there's some value to it that you could just always have it on you if you're that needing a multimeter and you're I don't know <laughs> only have one pocket I don't know uh, anyway so the other thing is the MobiLink TNC3 I did a video on this I absolutely love this thing this thing's very cool I've been able to do pretty much everything I want to do with it considering that it is a uh, it's a no frills TNC terminal node controller which is sometimes referred to as, as similar to a modem like back in the day when you would do dial-up internet, for those of you that are old enough to remember that, uh, that's kind of what this functions as. And it works really well. The, the software for it is great. I'll show you that app too if we have time. But yeah, there's a software, there's an app that's on Android that allows you to control the TNC, and it works really well. Okay, so this is more expensive. This is about $120, if I remember correctly. And it works with small radios like the Yaesu, um, what is that, FT3R. I have one of those. It's a great radio, tiny little thing. Uh, where do you find it? There it is. Let's go to shop really quick. I want to give you an accurate price. Yeah, so 120 bucks. So they're not giving it away, that's for sure. But um, I, I will point you to this page. If, if you do end up buying one of these, go to the connectors page. And, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Burp, burp, burp. Uh, radios, kits, TNC cables. That's the one you want, TNC cables. So they have a ton of cables for different radios. So that TNC coax for Kenwood, Wushin, Baofeng, $10 cable. They got you covered. TNC for the Yesu. Icoms, they've got all the major connectors that you'd want. Uh, you might want to throw a ferrite on these, but um, yeah. And, and by the way, if there's anybody that has a question, just at Ham Radio Crash Course, and then I can get to them. I don't want to leave you hanging on questions if you have them, so drop them in there. Let's see, what else? Uh, just a couple other things. That HGUV98 is the radio that I reviewed recently, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's about $162. It only does APRS, though. That TNC will not work with the Winlink. I could not get that to work. Well, the tablet just timed out. I hope that doesn't stop the Winlink. Uh, let's see. No, we don't need that. We pulled that up. Poke it. Poke it. And yeah, last but not least, most of the items that I talked about, the things I didn't have were the Bluetooth Baofeng programmer, which um, it's not like Chirp. It doesn't query from repeater book. So you're still going to have to go like line by line and type them in manually, which could be a little pain in the butt-ish, but um, not, not too horrible. Let's see, Sean, AI7EQ asked, do any of the radios with Bluetooth built in support these apps natively or do you need the MobiLink? So good question, Sean. The, all the APRS apps, uh, the Bluetooth APRS radios will generally work with APRS Droid, at least that HGUV98 will, as seen on my video. It'll just connect via Bluetooth without problem. If you want to do more TNC type things, then you're going to need to, to pop for a MobiLink if you want the control like that. How much data can you send on WinLink? Like just JPEGs or just some text? Uh, it's really just for text. Somebody more smarter than me can probably answer that in the chat. One second. I'm just trying to unlock this thing. It's all hocked up. 
What's going on here? <laughs> Get out of here. There we go. Oh, it did it finish? I don't know that it finished. Interesting. Well, I'll have to keep let me let me try let me start that again and see if it's uh if it's still got stuff in the session. Let's let's go back over here. It did time out and and uh went to sleep. Oh, is it? Okay. That wasn't that big a deal. Oh, there you go. So, there you go. Thank you very much from W6MCH. It says, hi, Josh. Just saying hello to you and everyone on the live stream. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Will the Signal Link and FL Digi work on an Android tablet? Uh, signal link. The signal link should work. That's just an audio connection. You'd have to split the audio. FL Digi, though, I do knew. I think they do have an FL Digi version for, um, I think they have an FL Digi version for Android. But I, we only have an hour, so I was sticking to the stuff that I was super into. I'm really into WinLink. I, I do really like having the capability of always doing WinLink when I'm out in the field. And then here's just something for free since, um, since we know this works, I've already tested this before. So you get yourself a Gotenna mesh here. And we'll go ahead and kick out of this. Kick out of here. Go. Where is it? Okay, so hypothetically, this should kick in. Paul, <laughs> W2RF says, thanks for suggesting something else I need. Yeah, I kind of felt that this would hit people uh, because it's like, it's not very expensive. And I know that the, the impulse buys like really draw people in. So thank you, Paul. Appreciate the super chat, even though I might have, uh, I might have spent, you some, spent some of your money. Let me show you uh, Gotenna really fast. So we just do a shout is like simplex. Just say hi. Hi, hi, 73. And then we'll see this guy blow up, hopefully. And this is a mesh device, so. There you go. That's it. That's how, that's how Gotenna works. Uh, Gotenna is a mesh device. It's you know it's it's business band so it's like 900 megahertz is the space that it operates in nothing fancy but it works fine all right yeah well that was that was pretty much it that we blew through that really quick was there anything i missed oh yeah i i do want to leave you with the uh, talking about raspberry pi all that fun stuff so here's here's my thoughts on this i i think they all have their place and i think you have to decide what is most important for you for me, having a tablet-like device that's inexpensive, I appreciate it's more than the Raspberry Pi, but hear me out, I'm going somewhere with this. Inexpensive, the devices that connect to it kind of do most of what I wanted to do, except for HF radio, right? Everybody, we, we all want to be in HF. And I haven't, I haven't dipped my toe into that yet. Uh, I will be looking into that. The tablet is going to be easier to kind of cart around and use it in a, in a tool-based scenario, like with the Poe kit and with the nano vna all that fun stuff the raspberry pi is going to have more utility as far as it being a single board computer you know a small computer the problem is that there's things that have to go along with that right you're going to need a battery system to keep it charged you're going to need whatever kind of accoutrement for cabling if you're going to use a usb sound card you're going to have to factor that into the price of it 
a case. You're not just going to run a bare Raspberry Pi, all that fun stuff. Neither one is more valuable than the other. Other, They just have a specific set of tools and things that they're specifically good at that you need to consider when you're putting together a kit. For me, uh, the tablet's real nice at, you know, 100 bucks. It's a $100 tablet, and it does all that and interfaces with all those things really easily, really simply. I think it's great. I, I don't think my Raspberry Pis are as nearly portable as that tablet. Some of you probably have more portable Raspberry Pis. I will agree, they definitely do more things because there's actual real ham radio software that is available because it's running on Linux on the Raspberry Pi. And, and I love that. I think that's great. Again, not throwing any shade on either one. They both have their value. You should consider both of them. Hey, why not? Have both. Go buy yourself the cheap $100 tablet and go buy yourself an even cheaper Raspberry Pi and build a really kick-ass uh, setup. Like, get yourself one of these bad boys, right? My favorite uh, Raspberry Pi case, my Raspberry Pi 4 lives in here that sits right on top of my 7610. I'm actually going to be doing another reload of the KM4 ACK. This is the Argon 1 case, by the way. Um, love this case. It's got active cooling. It has active cooling. I might be wrong. No, it does have active cooling because it actually has um, temperature controls that you can, you can change this. Um, this is portable. You know, this is hotel portable, backpack portable, kind of. GPIO pins are right there. That's a cool little unit. Really nice. Now, you probably need a tablet to interface with this, though, right? Or something, a monitor. So maybe you still need the tablet because you're going to VNC into this, maybe, when you're out in the field. So, ooh, hey, maybe there's a future video on that. We'll bring back the Lenovo VNCing into my Raspberry Pi. How's that sound? Well, I hope you do subscribe for that and come back and watch uh, the next video. I will throw it one more time over here. I do want to pull up this Lenovo so everybody knows which one I ended up going with. Again, I just went to Walmart and picked this thing up. It's the same price at Walmart as it is on Amazon. It's the Lenovo Tab M8 tablet. It's just an 8-inch cheap Android tablet. It comes with a docking station, and there's no pictures for it. Great. Um, I also did get the little folio the um, microfiber folio. Well, that's a bummer. It's got a, oh, you know what? Let's see. Yeah, so that's what the tablet, that's the uh, docking station. It's just this little bricky, yeah, it's right there. That's the docking station. Hey, thanks for the video. Appreciate that. Can I give you a thumbs up? Hold on. There it is. You got two thumbs up now, bud. Uh, nicely done. So yeah, they're, they're, they've got a little tablet case for it too no magnets nothing fancy doesn't do anything special um yeah just simple stuff all right thanks sean ai7 eq says great show appreciate that thanks so much for watching uh don i agree with you i prefer the 10 inch tablets too but if i want something that's super small i can go into kind of any bag i'm gonna go with the eight inch in fact i would have probably went with the seven inch if if we could do that grimace the gpd pocket too Yep, I've got one of those as well. Uh, that'll do everything for sure. Sometimes tablets are a little bit easier. I don't know. Your your decision, your call. Hey, Wild uh, Wild Cascadia Radio. Thank you very much for for the comment. Sean Wyland, I agree. The Argon Forty is like the best case. All right. Well, everybody, I'm going to wrap things up here. We've just gone over the hour. We're going to head over to Discord and continue this discussion over there. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about tablets, maybe, but we generally open it up to any questions on ham radio, even questions unrelated to ham radio. And we love it when people join us for the first time. We always go to the first-timers first to ask any questions that they may have and, you know, have a little fun out there. All right. Uh, we will be doing the Patron Picks episode next week. So patrons get a vote. The producer level gets a vote deciding what the live stream topic will be next week. We're taking that vote now. It'll go out shortly after the live stream tonight. And, uh, yeah, you can get in on that if you're so interested in supporting the channel. Speaking of the patrons, let me give you a big shout-out. I want to say thanks to all my patrons. All of the producer levels, thank you so much. Cheers to you. Appreciate it. They do have FL Digi for Android future video I think oh it's not available in the store so does that mean you have to you have to um root 
Hmm. I think so. Ryan Reed says, hi, my first time. Hello. I hope you got to see part of the show because I'm pretty much wrapping things up. But if you want to join us over on the Discord after chat, click the link in the description and follow us right on over there. H dose. So the one thing I don't want to happen right now is people to go, will the used such and such work? I have no idea. Go download it and, and run it. And you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough about Android tablets. I know this Lenovo that I bought. I did know that my dad's, uh, what was it, LG tablet that he gave me, too slow for what I wanted to do, particularly the SDR. It did not like the the SDR app and running the SDR. So, you know, going to give that to kids, let them have it, and, and I upgraded to the $100 tablet. KD8COJ says, I want to start making podcasts with my Atom Extreme. Cool. Do it. Do it. The time is now. Do it now. Particularly, who knows what's happening with, you know, the the virus that shall not be named. Are we going back into lockdown? I've heard some wild rumors, wild things uh, about the state of the state of the state of Florida, for instance. Stay safe, everybody. Uh, I'm not going to mention my thoughts on anything. I don't care. I just want you all to be safe. So you do what's right for you and, and, and keep keep safe. <laughs> mm. Cheers to the brew crew. All right, everybody. Uh, that'll do it for me this week. Please consider joining us over at the Discord. We'll be out there for at least a couple of hours. Sometimes those go well into the night, well past the point where I should have gone to sleep. So I hope you consider joining us over there. I will be live streaming to Twitch when we do the after chat. So if you're so interested, it's Hammer to Crash Course on Twitch as well. So you can watch the video of that. But I'm going to head out. I'll talk to you later. All right, guys. 73. See ya. Enjoy some memes while we go. The People's Republic of California, says Sean Wyden. Oh, what's up with that meme? Fix that. There we go. the chopper <laughs> my throat hurts a bit otherwise I'd, I'd give it a little bit more I feel like you gotta throw a lot behind an Arnold uh, voice Christiana just got a 10 inch tablet octa core CPU 3 gigs RAM 64 gigs of storage IPS screen Android Pi Bluetooth speakers what is that um, 10 inch tablet octa core makes it.